Hi everyone, I'm Steve and this is the College Support Network. In the past, I've worked in high schools as a college advisor and I also have experiences working in college financial aid, academic advising, as well as admissions. I'm really passionate about college access and I know applying to college can be really confusing as well as really frustrating. That's why I'm here to provide you all with the most accurate and quality information so you can reach your college goals. In my last video, I talked about grants, which I consider the best type of financial aid just because you don't really have to pay the money back, so it's considered free money, and the application process is pretty easy for the most part. For today's video, I'm going to focus on scholarships and work study, which I also consider free money. I consider them not as great as grants just because for scholarships and work study, the application process is a little bit longer and you do have to do a little bit more work to get the financial aid. However, with that being said, it's still free money and I think you should all be taking advantage of it if you are eligible. And with that being said, for today's video, I just want to talk a little bit about what scholarships and work study is, how you can actually be eligible for them, and then how you can apply for them. But before we start, I have three important notes for you. The very first is I am not a financial aid advisor, nor do I claim to be a financial aid advisor. I'm simply here just to provide you all with the most accurate and quality information that I have so you can make informed decisions about your career as well as education. The second thing to know is that this video is just going to serve as a general overview for both scholarships and work study. So I'm not gonna go into deep details about how to apply to $100,000 worth of scholarships or how to apply to an interview for work study jobs and things like that. With that being said, I will be making dedicated videos in the future about both scholarships and work study so if you're interested in learning more about these different types of financial aid and how you can maximize it i recommend subscribing to the channel and lastly if you learned something new or you enjoyed the video at all please feel free to give it a thumbs up and then share it with a friend it really does help my channel grow with that being said let's get started all right y'all let's talk scholarships in my financial aid overview video, I talked about how scholarships were a form of free financial aid that you don't have to pay back. And typically the money that you get from scholarships can be used towards educational costs such as tuition, fees, room and board, transportation, books, and anything else like that. However, the interesting thing about scholarships is that it really just depends on what the scholarship provider wants. Some scholarship providers will want you to use the money specifically on tuition. Some will say you could use it on rent as well. Some will say that you have to use it to buy books. Some will say that you have to use it on transportation and then some just really don't care at all and you could use it on whatever you want. That's why it's really important for you all to really look into these scholarships and talk to the scholarship providers to see what you can actually do with the money. It really just depends on what they want. And when I refer to scholarship providers or they, that just means there's a lot of different sources that scholarships can come from. You can get it from the federal government, the state government, specific colleges and universities that you applied to, or they could even come from private organizations like businesses, restaurants, banks, churches, nonprofit organizations, and so on. The point I'm trying to make here is that there's hundreds and thousands of scholarships out there available for you all to apply to. There isn't one specific source of financial aid that you can use to apply to every single scholarship. And there isn't one specific eligibility requirement that makes you eligible for every single scholarship. It's really important for you all to do your own research to see which scholarships you're eligible for and which ones make sense for you to apply to. Similar to grants that I mentioned in the last video, I would say there's probably two main types of scholarships. There's need-based scholarships and then merit-based scholarships. For those who aren't aware, need-based scholarships are offered to students who demonstrate financial need. And basically demonstrating financial need just means that you can't afford to pay for college out of your own pockets or you'll need financial aid to get through college. For these specific types of scholarships, most of it is going to depend on your household income or your family income. And because there's so many different scholarships out there, the income limit or ceiling is going to be different for every single one of them. So like I said, definitely do your own research to figure out what that number is. Merit-based scholarships are going to be entirely different from need-based scholarships just because eligibility for merit-based scholarships usually include being very accomplished in a specific thing or a combination of different things. For example, there are merit-based scholarships for being really good at basketball, football, or any other sport, but then you could also get it for being really good at math or science or engineering. Additionally, students could get it for any other special talents like music, arts, so if you're a really good singer or if you're really good at playing the saxophone, pretty much anything that you're excelling in or very accomplished in, you can get a scholarship for it. Lastly, there's also a lot of scholarships specifically for character traits as well as identities. For example, there are some scholarships for students that have parents that were in the Navy or the Marines. There's some scholarships for students that are left-handed, some scholarships for students that are tall, some scholarships for students that were short, 
Honestly, there's so many of them out there and it really just depends on what your identities and character traits are. I know I said this already, but if you take one thing from this video at all, please just remember that there's hundreds and thousands of scholarships available out there for you all. It really just takes a couple of minutes out of your day to just look up the ones that you're eligible for and then just apply to them. Every single year, scholarship providers have thousands and thousands of dollars to give to students and a lot of the times the money doesn't get used just because students feel like, oh, I'm never gonna get that scholarship or there's so many students applying for it. This is true for the very big scholarships, but like I said, there's thousands of them out there and there's a lot of small ones that students aren't applying to. And like I said at the top of this video, I'll be doing a dedicated video in the future about how to apply to all these scholarships, how to look for them, and then how to just maximize Maximize your scholarship money so if you're interested in learning more about that I definitely recommend subscribing however for the purpose of this video I do want to leave you all with four tips about scholarships I think can be really useful for you all the very first tip is call the financial aid office for every single college or university that you're applying to or if you already know which college you're going to enroll in call that financial aid office and just ask hey I'm really interested in going here. What types of scholarships do you have available for students like me given my situation? My second tip is to contact your high school counselor or maybe a college advisor if you have one on your campus. Then ask them for a list of local scholarships or maybe community-based scholarships that may be eligible for you to apply for. This is a great idea because if it's a local or community-based scholarship, it means only students that live in that area are going to be eligible for it. So you're not competing against hundreds and thousands of students across the United States. You're only competing against students in that specific area. The third tip is to apply to scholarships as soon as you can. I know a lot of students get this idea that they shouldn't apply to scholarships until after their first semester or their first quarter or they shouldn't apply until they know exactly what school they're going to go to. However, I do think the more time you give yourself to apply to these scholarships, the higher chance you give yourself to get at least a couple of them. So like I said, I really recommend applying as soon as you can. And my very last tip is to make a current list of specific interests, special traits, special talents, as well as identities, achievements, and accomplishments, and then start looking for scholarships specifically for them. For example, let's say on your list, one of your special talents is that you're really good at speech and debate, or maybe one of your identities is that you're left-handed. You can now go on to the scholarship websites and look up different scholarships that are specific to those things that you just listed. I'll go into a lot more detail about how to actually look up scholarships in the future, so make sure to stay tuned. All right, y'all, let's talk about work study. Work study is the type of financial aid that you have to work for to actually get the financial aid. It basically provides you with a part-time job that you have while you're still in school to pay for educational costs such as tuition, fees, room and board, books and supplies, transportation, and so on. With that being said, remember that work study is just like any other job and you're going to get paid via paychecks. And because you're getting paid with paychecks, you can really use that money on whatever you want. So if you want to buy that new Patagonia jacket or you want to buy that PS5 that you've been eyeing or you want to buy something else entirely different, you can go ahead and do that. Don't tell anyone I said this though because you should really try to spend it on educational costs if you do need to. So work study is a federally funded program offered to students that demonstrate financial need. And like I mentioned earlier about scholarships, demonstrating financial need just means that your family or you can't pay for college without financial support. Besides demonstrating financial need, another important eligibility requirement to remember is that not every single college or university that you apply to or enroll in is actually going to be able to offer it to you. This is because not every single college participates in the federal work study program. So even if you meet the income eligibility and demonstrate financial need, if the college that you're going to doesn't participate in the federal work study program, you actually won't be offered the program at all. For students that are eligible for it and do get offered work study, please remember that there is a maximum amount that you could get every single semester or academic year. The maximum amount is going to vary between student to student just because it depends on your household income as well as the school that you're going to. For example, let's say student A is offered $4,000 of work study because they're going to a very expensive school and they demonstrate a lot of financial need. And then student B was only offered $500 of work study because they're going to a state school that doesn't cost as much and then their family makes a decent amount of money but they still need some money so that's why they were only offered $500 of work study. Like I said, it depends on these two things but a lot of other factors can come into play as well. And another thing about work study is that even though you're offered a certain amount, you might not actually even make that amount from the work that you do. And this is because like I said before, work study is just going to be like any other job. You're getting paychecks for the amount of hours and the amount of work that you do. So how do you actually apply for work study and then how do you get a work study job? 
To apply for work study, all you really need to do is apply for the free application for federal student aid, also known as the FAFSA. Once you submit your FAFSA, the answers and responses that you provide will help determine what your expected family contribution is going to be, also known as your EFC. And like I mentioned in a past video, EFC is very complicated, but basically it's just an index used by financial aid offices to determine how much financial aid you'll need to go to that specific school. So EFC is really important for a federal work study because depending on what your EFC is, it will determine if you're going to qualify for work study or not. And if it is determined that you are eligible for federal work study, you'll find out once you get your financial aid packages from the colleges that you were accepted into. And then from there, the process is going to be like any other job that you would apply for. You'll apply, hopefully get an interview, and then hopefully get hired. I know that sounds pretty simple, and honestly it is. However, there is a lot of details that go into actually applying to a work-study job. So if you want a dedicated video on that, like I said, make sure to subscribe because I'll be doing that in the future. However, for now, there are two important notes about this process that I want you all to be aware of. The very first thing is sometimes if you're offered the federal work study program and then you accept it but then you actually don't work at all or take advantage of it in your first year you might not get offered it again the following year but it really depends on a lot of different things if you're interested in it but you're not sure if you're going to get a job i would contact your financial aid office to see what the process is if you don't get a job your first year and if you'll be eligible for it your following year and the second thing to know is that if you are offered work study and you know for sure you want to work on campus or maybe even off campus, I would highly suggest accepting the federal work study program. The reason for this is because if you're a work study student, you're not actually getting paid by your employer or the school or even the office that you're working at. You're actually getting paid from the federal government for the work that you do. So a lot of the times these on-campus jobs are going to rather use federal work study money to pay you rather than have to pay you out of their own pockets, right? So if you have work study, you're going to have a leg up over other applicants. Alright y'all, that's all I have for today's video. In my next video, I'll be talking about loans and whether you should be taking it out for college or not. So if that's something that you're interested in, I recommend hitting that subscribe button down below. And before I let you all go, as always, I do have a question for you all. For today's question, I want to ask, have you started applying to scholarships yet? If yes, which scholarships are you applying to? If not, why not? As always, leave your comments down below. Alright y'all, that's all I have for today. You could have been doing anything else, but you spent it here with me learning about college, and more specifically, scholarships and work study. I think that's super awesome. As always, thumbs if you learned, and subs if you loved. Take care y'all.